magandang umaga po, Pilipinas muli. This is, uh, good morning, Philippines. This is Therese Zapanta Versosa of Empower Philippines. Welcome to Coffee Conversations. This is Dr. Jude Versosa. Good morning, America. Uh, good evening, America. We are actually broadcasting live from Seattle. Yes. We are just blessed today. It is first Friday and we are just thankful to the Lord that we are here because we have a special guest for everybody tonight. Before we begin, I would like to just let you know where we are at for Empower Philippines. So nine years ago, we started what we call now Empower Philippines. This is to target the poorest of the poor in our country, the Philippines. So even though Jude and I live in Bonda Lake, Washington, we strive to fulfill that mission along with our family to come home and fly two to three times a year to help with medical missions, surgical dental missions in the prisoners, help fund schools for the indigenous tribes in Culion for the Tagbanwa, help fund orphanages for the vulnerable elderly and the youth, and help for the tuition fees and scholarships for the orphans of survivors of extra drug war, extrajudicial killings, and also of seminarians. And actually our favorite one is to enjoy and partake breaking of the bread with the poorest of the poor who are the beggars in the street sides of the metropolitan cathedral of san fernando which is with the church where i grew up in anyway so that is the the original intent of empower philippines which we've been doing for the past nine years we felt that it was our calling to provide for physical poverty covid19 broke out and it just erupted and all of a sudden we are doing coffee conversations because Jude and I felt as many of you had probably felt the same thing that there was spiritual poverty we were dying in the inside we were looking for people to help us nourish because if we want to get to heaven we have to be in this together we have to create opportunities for what would people do in this time and so we have created coffee conversations and we thank God because God has been giving us this five loaves and two fish through people who say yes to us, like today's guest. So that physical poverty to spiritual poverty, we tie all of this in. And today in the Philippines, it is the feast day of the saint of the poorest of the poor, Mother, Mother Teresa. Teresa of Calcutta. It's very providential. It is very providential to have our guest today to celebrate with us with Saint Ma Saint Mother Teresa of Calcutta, he, he she always said she's always seen the poor in Calcutta, but with, there was never a kind of poverty that she was um, baffled by when she saw this different kind of poverty in the states, which is what we call spiritual poverty. So I think right now we are in that we're trying to nourish ourselves in the spirit. So there we are. That's the reason why we have coffee conversation. And so I will leave, uh, I will give the microphone to Jude. Yeah, let's introduce yes. our guest for today. Uh, Jonathan Rumi is an actor, director, and producer, and musician. He has uh, appeared on Chicago Med, The Mindy Project, The Good Wife, The Newsroom, Law and Order, NCIS, among other shows. Some of his notable voiceover work includes voice matching Michael Douglas for Marvel's Ant-Man and Wasp, British actor Henry Golding in Crazy Rich Asians, he serves as the vice president on the boards of two nonprofit media companies, Catholics and Media Associates and G.K. Chesterton Theatre Company, and was recently nominated for Papal Knighthood by the Order of St. Gregory the Great. Jonathan Rumi credits his Catholic faith as the foundation of, of his portrayal of Jesus. The actor at the center of the highest grossing crowdfunded media project in history, we would like to welcome Jonathan Rumi. Welcome, Jonathan. Welcome. Hi guys, thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me, what an honor. Well, thank you, thanks, thanks for saying yes. Uh, you of course. Gave us, you gave us quite a scare just a while back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. About that Instagram yeah. post. I mean, yeah, that I been... apologize. <laughs> I, uh, no. I realize I have, um, some days I feel like I've got just a little too much on my plate and, uh, uh, but God, God makes, uh, makes things right. So, you know, uh, clearly, I'm here. Uh, we're good to go, and uh, I, I couldn't be happier. But um, yeah, thank you. I know. Me. I mean, uh, <laughs> you being so busy and saying yes to us. I mean, wouldn't it have been great? I was thinking a while ago. Well, maybe 
since he plays the role of Jesus, he can be in two places at one time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, there's a couple of saints that have been known to bilocate, uh, like St. Padre right. Pio, but uh, I don't have right. Pio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just in one place. I'm just one one humble little man. That's right. We could have joined you before the rosary we were planning. Yeah, <laughs> well, you know what? I, I, uh, I, I pushed it to three hours from now. So if you're around, please join me. We, we will. will do that. We'll make All it right. a point. Yeah. Okay. Jonathan, um, we wanted to ask if you could lead us in, in prayer and maybe read the gospel of today. Um, sure, sure. Let me just pull that up the Gospels. And thank you for um, for bearing with my schedule and for uh, all of the craziness. We want to thank Leslie for helping <laughs> us out. <laughs> yeah, Leslie is amazing. So folks, while Jonathan is looking for the, uh, for the gospel for uh -huh. today, uh, the format of the program is such that we would be interviewing Jonathan after the gospel reading and after he leads us in prayer. Yes. And after that, if we have time, we'd, we'd really uh, we'd want to entertain some questions. Uh, we want to be very respectful of Jonathan's time. As you can tell, he's very busy. Mm -hmm. And then we'd like to say a prayer for Jonathan before he goes. Um, and then uh, stay tuned because after Jonathan leaves, uh, we we have uh, some conclusion and some announcements for you. Yeah. Um, and so, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm reading from the fifth of September for Saturday. Um, or am I reading for for uh, the fourth? You could read the fourth. The fourth. Yeah. Okay. Because I know there's Our a time. time difference, and we're talking. Okay. So Pacific time. Okay. I wanted to make sure you that know I why? got the right read. You know why? Because there's more speaking light for you. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, and just the gospel? Is it Luke? Yes, please. Luke, okay. 53339. Okay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Son Spirit. Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. A reading from the gospel of Luke. Glory to you. The scribes and Pharisees said to Jesus, The disciples of John the Baptist fast often and offer prayers. And the disciples of the Pharisees do the same, but yours eat and drink. Jesus answered them, Can you make the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them. Then they will fast in those days. And he also told them a parable. No one tears a piece from a new cloak to patch an old one. Otherwise, he will tear the new, and the piece from it will not match the old cloak. Likewise, no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins, and it will be spilled, and the skins will be ruined. Rather, new wine must be poured into fresh wineskins, and no one who has been drinking old wine desires new, for he says, the old is good. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, 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 Jesus Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Sure. Thank, thank you, Jonathan. I mean, um, what an apt gospel. I was reading through it this morning, and I know you'd be reading it, but Jesus' description of holiness was not confined to sequestration and isolation like the Essenes, not, nor on, on just pure austerity alone. It was communal, it was inclusive, it was non-judgmental. Uh, he talked about the wedding. Uh, the weddings traditionally, uh, the traditional weddings have been uh, quoted in the, in the New Testament many times. He said, can you make the wedding guests um, fast while the bridegroom is with them. Jesus is truly the bridegroom and the church is the bride. He's the marriage between heaven and earth and humanity and divinity. And I think, I thought it was apt because this is what you do, Jonathan. You play the role of Jesus' humanity without taking away from his, from his divinity. And I think it's a great segue. We wanted to ask you um, who, who, who you are, Jonathan. Maybe you could describe us, or tell us about yourself <laughs> before the chosen. Um. 
Well, I'd like to think that not much has changed about me personally, um, other than my walk with Christ has grown exponentially deeper. Um, who I who I was and, and who I still am is is um, is a person that has been um, given this desire and these gifts to serve God through my art. I've been an actor for. Oh, probably about 20 some odd years. Uh, but in between that time, I've done a bunch of other types of side jobs to kind of, you know, to, to make ends meet, to make a living. Um, I'm also a musician. Um, you know, I'm somebody that has worked um, very hard to, to, to try to do what is right in my life and, and, to, um, and what is right hopefully has served God's will. Um, and not just my own, um, but that's a, that's a daily struggle. I think many of us, um, face is, is doing, doing the things that we feel called to do, the things that we're inspired to do, the things that we're excited to do, and then doing the things that God is calling us to do. And hopefully the two intersect at some point, uh, they don't always do that. And I found that a couple as as you know recently as a couple of years ago that I I thought I was doing what God wanted me to do um, but I wasn't really trusting him fully completely um, and so I, I realized that at my probably the lowest point in my life on many levels spiritually financially you know um, emotionally um, it was at my lowest point where I finally surrendered and basically said, whatever you want, God, I'm leaving it in your hands. I'm giving all of my problems to you. I need your help. So it was a surrender of not just my circumstances and, and my will, but my ego mm -hmm. as well. And I've tried to, um, I've tried to maintain that level of um, exist, that kind of existence, that surrender since that time um, two years ago. And a as I've continued to do it, it's just brought me um, more and more joy, more and more grace. Um, God is so faithful. He's so great. He's so uh, good to us. Um, if we're just willing to, to go along with, with what he's got mapped out for us and, um, I've seen that in my life and the, in the life of other people who've, who really, you know, made the decision to, um, <clears throat> to, to give everything to him. So it's been awesome. Um, you know, Jonathan, that is to me as a Filipino. Oh, by the way, have you been to the Philippines yet? I have not been there yet. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, one day, hopefully you get to, Spirit, not just spiritually, but physically, get to the Philippines, yeah. and we It'd can. Be lovely. Yeah, that would be great. We'd love to host you. Yes, yeah. yes, if you will indulge us. Anyway, I of was. Course. I asked that. I asked that because, as a Filipino, right now, for them to see you on on their screen in inside the Filipino home is to us the best personification of Jesus being up close and personal. Yes, you portray mm. Jesus, but you're still Jonathan, right? That's and, right. And what you're doing right now beyond the script, because the Chosen series will one day end. Mm -hmm. You know, it will be recorded. It will be played. But what I find as a Filipino, and I, I hope I speak for the fellow Filipinos back home right now, is that what you're doing beyond the script is you're personifying that you are as personable as Jesus is, which is what we need to be anyway. Because I think what your story is, what our stories are for all of everyone in the world makes for you know what, that person can do it in his lowest point, he surrendered, then you know what, I'm inspired. Because I see we're not always the Holy Spirit for one another. Sometimes my husband is not always the Holy Spirit for me, but you know, other people can be the Holy Spirit for us. So I think as a Filipino, I want to just say thank you 
First, for coming into our homes today, spiritually, hopefully physically, you can visit us. Second, we, had, we just want to affirm your story of your total loving obedience to God and say, Lord, use me. And I think that's where we are now. That's why you are here saying yes, saying your fiat, just like the Blessed mm -hmm. Mother. So I would just want mm -hmm. to say thank you for that. Thank you. That's, I, re I really appreciate your words. It's very, very kind of you. And, and uh, yeah, all, you know, all, all I can um, try to continue to do is to, um, to, to, to remind myself to, to really um, champion the virtue of humility because that allows um, all the other virtues to take root. You know, I think it was St. Augustine that, uh, that, uh, that may have, or might have even been St. Vincent de Paul. All, uh, most of the church fathers talk ab about the necessity of the virtue of humility. So I don't want to misquote them, but in essence, they all agree that without the virtue of humility, um, none of the other virtues can sort of take root within a person. So uh, my prayer is that I just hope to, you know, maintain um, that track and, uh, and, and stay connected to Christ uh, and, and try to imitate his uh, humbleness and, and meekness and, um, and serve him as best I can by, uh, by quality encounters with all whom I meet. Um, and that no matter where this, this trip takes me, um, whether it's the chosen, whether it's, you know, my work as an actor or life as uh, in the entertainment industry. Um, I just hope to, that, uh, God allows me to, to stay on the path and keeps me encouraged and, and, and strengthened for, um, for all that is to come. So thank you for your words and, and your prayers and, and your thoughts. They, they, they truly mean a lot to me. Oh, you're we, okay. Amazing, amazing words, you know, um, I love it. Humility is the source of all virtues and from all virtues follow. You truly embody it. Um, we sense it across the screen. Mm -hmm. uh, it must be really difficult to be, to, to, to willfully and purposefully want to be humble, mm -hmm. surrounded by success and yes. the success that you have. But I want to go back, Jonathan, to mm -hmm. your story. You, there's a story behind that. You said that there was a, a lowest point in your life where your humility and your, your faith was tested. Would you mind sharing that with our viewers? Sure, I'm happy to. Um, so, you know, I, I had been out in Los Angeles for eight years. I'm from New York originally. I, I uh, was born in, in Hell's Kitchen, and uh, which is in the center of Manhattan. It's sort of on the west side. Um, and uh, I lived in Queens, which is one of the, the five boroughs that make up the, the city, the municipality of New York City. Uh, I lived in Queens, and then uh, as I got a little older, we, when I was old enough to go to school, my sisters and I we, and my family, we moved to the suburbs. So I grew up mostly in the suburbs of New York. Um, I, I went to public school. I didn't go to Catholic school or anything. Um, I, 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 uh, I was baptized. I made my first communion. I made my confirmation. And I always, God was always in my life. Um, and I always had a conversation uh, with, with Christ. I, I'd always talk to Christ and, and talk to myself. I talk to myself all the time. I still do. But ever since I was a kid, I would always just have conversations with, with God in my own way. And, and then, um, you know, I went to art school in New York. Uh, after I got out of college, I started working in the entertainment industry. I worked behind the scenes. I was uh, what they call a location scout for most of my career in New York, mm -hmm. which meant that uh, if a movie was filming scenes somewhere in like uh, a specific location, whether it be a bar or a park or, uh, you know, uh, in the middle of a field or something like that, my job would be to go find those places that the di director might want to film the scene. Um, and so I'd say probably, you know, after college, uh, my, my faith was um, probably, I wouldn't say weak, but it's, it wasn't the most uh, a passionate uh, version of what it, I knew it could be or what it would eventually become. I didn't even know what it could be at the time. I just knew that like, I always believed in God. I loved God and, and, and he was a part of my life. And as I contemplated moving to Los Angeles, you know, I, of course my prayer life started to, to get stronger as I got older. And when I contemplated coming here, that was a big part of the decision. And, um, and I got here and, and then there was always this, there's always this, 
this concept uh, and this uh, impetus for for actors and artists or anybody who is desiring to have some kind of success is that you, you have to, you know, the Lord helps those who help themselves. So it's on you to do what you got to do to make things happen. And you can't be idle. And, you know, there are so many people that come to Los Angeles with stars in their eyes and they, they don't do anything to, to, they don't work at it. They don't, they think if they're maybe perhaps if they're uh, good looking or, or they know somebody or they have a little bit of talent that automatically you have a career. That's, that's not how it works. It's not remotely how it works. Um, if you are young, if you have talent, if you are good, uh, you know, are, um, uh, are in the right place at the right time, you have good connections, you, you are somebody, yeah, you can get a job or two jobs or three jobs. Um, but then you have to have that as well as everything else that it makes a person successful. Um, so I think for me, that's, you have to have a certain amount of goodness and you have to be honest and, and even though not everybody always plays by the rules in, in life, never mind just one niche of, of an industry versus another. So I always, you know, because it's a really difficult and challenging field in which to work, um, you're mostly not working. You're mostly, most of an actor's career is spent not working, just statistically. The people you see on TV and in the movies make up about three to 5% of the population of those working in the entertainment industry. Wow. The, top, wow. the top three or 5%, five might even be generous, but um, that's, that's what you see. Uh, and the rest are unemployed or they're doing other jobs or they're working in bars or they're working in, you know, they have other careers or they're, you know, and eventually, if you're not available when you need to be available, if you're not, you know, uh, ready to go at the drop of a hat, where if you've taken a job because you need to feed yourself, you're not always going to be available. So many people end up drifting out of the business. I wasn't ever one of those people that wanted to take a full time job so that I could not be available to audition. Mm -hmm. So what's the alternative? Well, lots and lots and lots of part-time jobs. Mm -hmm. So that was my life is juggling all different kinds of part-time jobs for several years. It got to the point where, you know, I'm eight years in and I, I probably was juggling a version of six or seven different side jobs to just mm -hmm. to make ends meet. And I started realizing that the more jobs I was taking on because I'm like, I got to make money. I got to drive. I got to, you know, do this. I work in the service industry, restaurant, whatever, you know, the more jobs I seem to take on, the less money I made. I'm like, wait a minute. This, how does that make sense? I don't, this, this, this doesn't compute, mm. but that was the reality. That was my reality. And it got to the point where it was so stressful I was at one point living off of credit cards uh, and I woke up on a Saturday morning in 2018 in May and I was, um, I was overdrawn by a hundred bucks. My checking account was just overdrawn, which means it was, it was minus a hundred dollars in it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I had $20 in my pocket. I was out of food and I had no work. And I had a bunch of, of uh, bills coming up like for that month. And I just broke down. Literally, I was on my knees staring up at that crucifix I'm staring at right now. Being like, you know what, God, for the last eight years I've been in Los Angeles and the last maybe 10 or 15 as an actor, my constant prayer was like, Lord, if this is not what I'm supposed to be doing, please take it out of my heart, take the desire from my heart, because this is really difficult. I'm doing everything I'm supposed to be doing and nothing is changing. I'm worse off now than when I got here mm -hmm. and I don't understand. And I had worked as an actor. I had done a bunch of TV shows. Like if you look at the dates on IMDb, if you look me up on internet movie database and you find me, and you see the credits and you look at everything below before 2018, you're like, oh, this guy works all the time. Well, no, no. It's like, 
one or two jobs a year if I was lucky. I wasn't getting any opportunities. And I'm like, what am I doing wrong? And so just on my knees, I'm like, you know what? I've done everything I can do. I'm supposed to, you know, help myself. I've been trying to help myself and nothing's happening. I've asked for uh, some, some other uh, desires to, to replace, to supplant mm-hmm. the desire to work as a performer. Nothing's happened. I haven't been given any other opportunities. So you know what? I'm going to step back now and I'm going to give all of my problems to you. All those bills that are due next week in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to give that to you. Where am I going to get food? I don't know, but I'm going to give it to you because I'm out. I'm done. You said your burden easy is easy and your yoke is light. Well, here, here's some of mine. And so later that afternoon, I went to get my mail and I opened the mailbox and there were three checks in the mail that restored everything. Mm-hmm. Praise God. A week later, I got another check that was equal to the three checks that I had that first day on that Saturday. But that Saturday, when I got those checks in the mail, it was like God said, do you get it? I was mm-hmm. waiting for you to surrender. Are you ready to let me take over? Can I step in now? Mm-hmm. Whereas up to that point, it was like God was saying, hey, why don't you come to me? And I'm like, no, 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 God, I got it. I got it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get this job. But let me just let Sorry, somebody called in. Uh, God is just like, well, but but let me just. I'm like, no, 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 no. God, I got. There's this thing coming through. I know this guy who's hooking me up with it. But let me. No, no, no. I got it. And then God was just like, all right, you got it. Right, you got right. it. I'm gonna. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> and then finally, I'm like, all right. Can you help me? Can you just help me? And he's like, all right. Get out of the way now. <laughs> let me step in. Three months after that. I got called for the chosen. Wow. And that kind of was, that was the beginning of the rest of my life thus far. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. You know, I, suffering does really transform us, Jonathan. I, I, I could, I could relate to your story. I lived in, um, I was born and raised in the Philippines and I trained uh, for my second residency in New York city, lived in a basement apartment for $1,200. This is in 2000. Wow. And, and um, you, you just got to train. Uh, you can't do second jobs and third jobs. And I was living off of um, whatever was left, which was probably about 200 bucks a month. And I was mm-hmm. living on food stamps. And, and um, it, it, it's amazing that, would you say that your suffering um, made you who you are? Would you say that it has, it has um, reshaped you? in some sort of way, because there's got to be, with faith, we don't believe in coincidence. There's got to be some providential mm-hmm. reason for what you've been through, right? Absolutely, yeah. I think without a doubt, suffering leaves its mark. And you've got two choices when you suffer. You either offer it up or you get bitter and reject it. Mm-hmm. And if you're busy trying to fight the suffering or be angry about the suffering, versus offering the suffering up to God, using the suffering, allowing the suffering to happen as as something that is part of your plan and knowing that it's only temporary, that it doesn't last forever. Nothing lasts forever. Um, If you, if you can embrace that versus fighting it, it, it makes it, it just alleviates the weight of it. Um, to a degree that you you can't even comprehend when you're going through it Mm -hmm. until you actually do it. So you actually have to commit to being okay with the suffering and offering it up. So, I mean, as Catholics, we're like, we're offered offered up to to Christ, to Jesus on the cross, you know, offered to Christ. And if I didn't have that, if I, Mm -hmm. I don't know how I would lens view my suffering like i i might it might be something that i i wouldn't be able to 
handled in the same way, you know? Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just, um, I, I just don't know what I would do. Right, right. You Can know, say something? yes, yes, please. Um, I, ha I don't have a question for you, Jonathan. It's just a comment about what you had just shared with us so beautifully. Again, from the lens of a Filipino girl, Filipino, you know, a, a young girl, we all, both of us grew up in the Philippines. It was just only 16 years ago that we really lived in the United States, but still go to our native land because that's where our roots are. I mean, you know, we, f to me, to someone like you who speaks in English, American looking, well, I, I thought you were from, you got this Middle Eastern uh, yeah. roots, but to me, if I see someone on TV and I watch them, Hollywood is equivalent to America. America is equivalent to opportunity of power, of influence, you know, of everything. And then for me to listen to you right now, talk about poverty, talk about what you see on TV, on, in the movies, that's not really what it is, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And just for you to say your innermost and lowest point, we're like, but that's what made you different. That's why God worked in you because I, as you were talking, I'm like, who, who will go down on his knees and say, Lord, take over? It was you. I don't think for any in Hollywood right now, for the people who just want to avoid faith, avoid religion in a secular world, you know, they don't want to talk about God. They get embarrassed when they talk about God, but you did. You went down to your knees and said, Lord, take over. And for you, for me to hear that, I hope that I also speak for the rest of the Filipinos who can hear you because... It'll resonate to them. Yes, because we're in a poor country. Mm -hmm. And for you to, to who lives in America and says this, mm -hmm. let alone you in Hollywood, this to us is, wow, this is the gospel of Jesus. Mm -hmm. To let go, to self-empty, that's why Jesus, you know, went down and got himself crucified for us. So I just want to say thank you again i mean it, it, all of your stories are just so relatable and so i i i, I want to thank you really i yeah. thank god for you thank you thank you that's so beautiful um you know i i find that um a lot of uh much of the entertainment industry's um profile or the perception of Hollywood is glamour and glitz and, you know, power and, and uh, uh, persuasion. Um, and so to be seen as being vulnerable, uh, to be seen as being um, somebody that does, that submits to a higher authority. Um, I'm sure there are people out there uh, who see that as a, uh, you know, uh, as, as a negative, as, uh, as, as a weakness, as, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, that's not the image you want to portray, but that's who I, you then have to ask myself, well, who, who am I, whose opinion am I trying to, to, to meet, you know, um, somebody had asked me if I've ever worried about, uh, there being any kind of backlash because uh this was in an interview of a back you know if i was worried about a backlash for being so um open about my faith um and my answer um then has not changed and that is um my destiny is not in the hands of men it's in the hands of god so if god decides he wants me to go on and do some other films or TV shows, secular or otherwise, um, as long as they're honoring him in some way and they're positive or, or you know, or it's at least, I, even if it's like a bad guy, you know, bad people don't consider themselves bad people. They just make bad choices because of the circumstances of their life or whatever. Or, but, you know, it could be somebody that there's an opportunity for redemption in that kind of a character. Like you can't, as an actor, you can't even judge, you can't judge the characters. You know, I can't say that's a bad character and be like, what makes him make these decisions? So, um, you know, it, it, but that's not, if, if, if God wants me to do these other things, who's going to stop him? God wins in the end. No, God, God doesn't lose. God wins. 
That's right. Mm. So it's just, am I going to continue to say, okay, say yes to surrender? Or am I going to try to, you know, par participate in, in the overarching fear that many other performers and, and you know, actors uh, think when they hear, oh, you, you, you can't, you can't be religious. You can't be seen as religious because you'll be blacklisted. I'm like, I'm too old to care about being blacklisted. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm not even that old, but I just don't care. Like spiritually, I just, it doesn't, it. it doesn't matter to me. Like it doesn't, whatever anybody wants to think or whatever film they want to put me in or not put me in. Mm -hmm. Great. It's, it's fine. It's fine because I'm not, I'm not answering to them at the end of the day. All of this is just temporary. This is all just none of this is is lasting you know this inside here is what's going to continue god is forever we are not so i wow, love it wow. i love the courage i mean that is to say and i wrote it down you said my destiny is in the hands of god i mean how many people can say that out in public right you know right. i mm -hmm. self-emptying kenosis kind of i don't i don't get it um i know that i don't understand everything and it's in the hands of god for those of you who are joining us uh, late, we are interviewing, interviewing uh, Jonathan Rumi, and we were just in the topic of suffering and uh, Jonathan's life story. Mm -hmm. um, Pope, uh, our Pope Emeritus Benedict, Cardinal, uh, then Cardinal Ratzinger, uh, once said that um, if we say that, the, I'm going to paraphrase it, if we say that the, uh, the suffering is the inner side of love, then we also have to understand uh, how to suffer. And why conversely, avoiding suffering actually causes us to be uh, incapable of life, incapable of adapting. And mm -hmm. uh, he used the word existential emptiness. And I thought that was very profound. Mm. Anyway, uh, 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 Jonathan, you, you've made mention about, uh, about uh, how, it, how it is to work in the industry that you're in. Um, how do you navigate not having any not having to compromise your morals when you make choices about things. I mean, it must be, it must be challenging. We know what Hollywood is, right? And um, thank God you're working amongst uh, colleagues who are wonderful people. we two weeks ago, we've interviewed Dallas Jenkins. Mm -hmm. oh, but, but how do you do that? H how do you, how do you navigate what, what the industry is currently? You know, I, I think, there's a lot more good people in Hollywood than people think. Mm. And I think the stuff that you see that is produced, that is uh, released, um, I think it unfairly represents the people that are here working in the industry because mm. the majority of the people I met are not like that. Um, maybe the majority of the, you know, people on the distribution side that are releasing those kinds of films that are, harmful to to young people um you know maybe maybe they are like that or maybe they're just so disconnected from themselves spiritually and from who god really is and what effect the work that they're doing is having on people if it's negative um that they just don't know uh, I, I i'd like to try to give most people the benefit of the doubt and, the, and again sort of referring to you know, evil characters don't necessarily know or think that they're evil. They like, they've got a job and this is what mm -hmm. they're doing. And, and then there is that contingent that is much darker and, and they've got nefarious and sinner, sinister sort of, you know, designs on, on how to infiltrate and influence the culture. Um, fortunately for me, I've never, I've never really been faced with that challenge. I, and, and it, I, I sort of, um, I liken it to certain kinds of relationships. Um, mm -hmm. There's certain people that you're attracted to and people that are attracted to you. Um, you know, uh, I've certainly been in phases of my life where I've made bad choices in partners where I'm like, well, that's not the right girl for me. But I would tend to repeat that, that uh, you know, uh, prototype and, and repeat the mistake. And I'm like, what is it that I'm, be, what, are, what is it about this person or this type of person that I'm attracted to? Um, and so, and then there are other people, and thankfully I, I learn after enough mistakes, I I think I've learned my lesson with certain types of personalities that just do not work well with me. And, and, uh, um, and then there's other types where it's, 
it's like you wonder, I wonder like, wow, I've never met this type of a person before, which there's never been a thing. We've just, I've never been attracted to that kind of a person with that sort of a lifestyle. And like, when you ask yourself, why is that? And I think it's, it speaks to the unknown. It speaks to the spiritual. And I think there are certain spiritual mechanisms and, and forces at play that can repel the things that aren't good for you. So if you're trying to surround yourself with light and with God, mm -hmm. people will get that sense when they meet you. Mm -hmm. And the people that are not of the light mm -hmm. will also, yeah, this isn't, this isn't the thing. We're not going to do this dance here. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like, I think it's just this inherent, like, yeah, we're, we're probably never going to work together on this kind of a film or that kind of a film. So I, I never get people asking me to do like slasher horror films. Like I've never once been asked to do a film like that. And mm -hmm. probably because God knows, and, and maybe so do people know that I probably would never ever do it unless there was something that would like, if it was like The Exorcist, if they remade The Exorcist, I would love to play Father Damien. Like my, my role oh. would be Father Damien. Do you know what I mean? There you go for those so, people who are li listening. So if anybody, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's one thing that I would love to, if, if they ever remade that film, like really did it like the original film, if anybody's never seen it, it's, Always it's frightening. It. It's, it's a little bit dated, uh, especially for, for younger audiences today, right. but it's still frightening. And it was like, to me, it's like liturgically authentic. You know, yeah. there's an authenticity right. about the relationships of the priests. They're not stereotypes. They're not caricatures. They're real people like Father Damien. He was, you see him, he's a boxer and like, he's a guy, you know, and, and at, at having a crisis of faith. Uh -huh. And like humans, we have crises of faith many times in our lives for many reasons, you know? Um, so it, it's a plausible, that's certainly a plausible um, plot, you know, plot line or a character that I would, you know, although it's, it, it starts to play with darker themes, in the end, it's about the light overcoming the darkness. So, right. Um, yeah, but but just the blatant, you know, graphic or, or films that are just not appropriate. Like I've never been asked to do one. I probably will never get asked if I was. I, you know, again, like unless there's something really redeeming about it, I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't do it anyway. So, yeah. like I've been yeah. lucky. God's been looking out for me. I guess the, the short answer. <laughs> Uh, is that I think just God's protected me from things that have been potentially harmful to me and hopefully given me a, a good enough head on my shoulders to discern between the projects that I should do and those I shouldn't do. Right. Beautifully said. Um, but The Exorcist, man, I mean, <laughs> I was frightened. Myself. But isn't it true, too, that um, it, it, you said authenticity. You used the word authenticity. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have neglected that uh, evil spirits and principalities are real. It's in the Bible. That's true. Oh, yeah. And um, uh, the world doesn't allow us to see it that way anymore. Um, anyway, um, th th we have a, I'm going to shift gears a little bit here, Jonathan, because right. we have a testimony that we wanted to read out to you. Um, we thought it was meaningful and it awesome. was powerful. Yeah. Before I read it, I just want to say this. Just a few days ago, well, I, we write, my husband and I, humbly, we are not journalists, we're not English majors, uh, I'm just a nurse, he's a, just a doctor, but we're writing something, it's called Daylight, it's a man of light, it's part of a flagship of in the Philippines, where we talk about the reflections of the gospel for today, so my, my assignment was the other day, Thursday, and it was about the miracle of the fish, and so mm. I was asking the Lord, you know, if you always do it every week, sometimes times the Holy Spirit is either you're kind of like oh I'm going to write again but I said Lord give me some glimpse of your Holy Spirit so I, I typed in the chosen of course and then I saw mm -hmm. the thing I mean we've seen it everybody who's now watching you has seen the chosen and that's what made us different and I would like to say oh my god um your face as you portrayed it oh boy the Holy Spirit is really at work with you why Without even the words, you were nodding at Peter. Take them, take them to the scene. Oh, well, 
maybe he can take oh, it. Oh, oh, <laughs> You're okay. here. You want to take us to the scene or, or yeah. Yeah, yeah. There was a scene there where you, there's like an acknowledgement. Um, you didn't say Can any you words. take us you there? Just... And then I could, so, yeah. You, you mean just to describe that, that part in the scene? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so when I tell Peter, when I tell Simon to, uh, to go and cast out his net again, right? And then uh, he said, but uh, Rabbi, we've been fishing all night, nothing. And I just kind of stand there looking at him. Right. And then he's looking at me and he's like, at your word? All right. And then he goes and he casts out the net and nothing happens. And he's staring at me and I'm just looking at him. Mm -hmm. And he's like, hmm? you see, like I told you. And I'm like, did you, did you tell me? <laughs> and then next thing, you know, the boat nearly tips over and the nets are dragged down by hundreds of fish, uh, which they struggled to get into the boat. Yeah, but you know what? Talking about your story a while ago, wasn't that you? Wasn't that us? You know, oh, yeah. I told you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I told you. Yeah. Once, no, no words. Somebody, no words. That's right. Yeah. He's like, okay, yeah, yeah, I got something for you here. When, whenever anybody asks me which, which of the apostles from the show do I most identify with, I just, Simon Peter. Simon Peter, without a doubt. Just hard-headed, thinks he needs to do it himself. And uh, just, just, trying to, just trying to, you know, make his way his way. And, uh, and it's only when he lets the Lord, when he says yes to the Lord, does his life change and his nets are overflowing. So, exactly. yeah, I, that, that is not a more perfect analogy for, for the moments in life that I have experienced God's yeah. grace in such a way. Yeah. And chills. so, yeah. Gave us chills. So just looking <laughs> at you, without the words, you expressed it. You know, mm -hmm. Jesus expressed it without words. And I was bawling again. I was like crying. <laughs> and the thing is, when you know, when, you're grow when you get older, like me, when you cry during the day, or like you're so tired and your eyes are heavy, I'm like, oh, this is why I don't want to watch the shows in over and over again. <laughs> John, I don't want to cry again. <laughs> again. Right? It's exhausting. Yeah. I wish, Jonathan, I, I wish I could do that to my wife when I'm out of work. Just kind of look at her and... <laughs> But it won't work. <laughs> no, it doesn't work. Like, what are you? What are you up to? <laughs> That's why we need others. For yeah. the Holy Spirit to come in. That's why we need God. So anyway, exactly. so you got to hear this out. Allow us to read this because this sure. is a Filipino woman who reached out to us. Yeah. Okay, my name is May Ferreros, mother of Daniel and Sophia, a wife to the late Eric Ferreros. I have been a pioneering member of a Catholic charismatic group, the Our Lady of Guadalupe Prayer Community based in Makati, Philippines for over 27 years now. For almost 23 years, I was married to a man I considered a perfect husband. We have served our prayer community together since we became members and have treated it as our second family. Sometime in 2017, Eric was diagnosed to have a rare skin cancer called Merkel disease. Our family's world was figuratively shattered when, in October 11, last year, barely three weeks before his 50th birthday, we lost Eric after a month-long hospital confinement. It was and still is a crashing blow to our family, most especially to me. It has been a very difficult year so far, and I admit that there were moments when I asked the Lord why he took Eric so early from us. We had so many plans yet to be fulfilled, and we have served him faithfully in and outside of our prayer community. Next year, it would have been our silver wedding anniversary, and we were looking forward to a grand celebration as we renew our vows. My Facebook profile picture was taken last year when we had a renewal of vows in Cana during our Holy Land pilgrimage. Uh -huh. One of the greatest blessings that gave me comfort during this difficult time was watching The Chosen during the Lenten season. Jonathan Rumi's portrayal of Jesus has moved me to believe that the Lord was truly human yet divine while he was on earth, that he can relate to all of us, especially our struggles and sufferings. I have been trying to get in touch with Jonathan when I heard his anecdote during the International Eucharistic Conference mm -hmm. about the woman who lost her son and called out to him as he was portraying Jesus in a church event. I felt the pain of that woman as I've also undergone a similar loss. I would have wanted 
to get a hug from Jesus, <laughs> to feel that the Lord truly understands and also feels the deep hurt I'm going through. The Chosen, most especially Jonathan's portrayal of Jesus, has been instrumental in the healing process that I'm still going through right now. May Jonathan and the Chosen touch, the, the Chosen touch many more lives in the years to come. Now he has a question for you. Many people have already asked you what your favorite scene is. I would like to ask you what scene did you find most challenging for you and what challenges did you encounter and how, and how did you overcome it? Most challenging scene. Beautiful testimony. Thank you. Uh, that's, that's really lovely. Wow, that is, uh, that's profoundly moving. Thank you for sharing that with me. That's, yeah, her uh, name is May Ferrero. God bless you, May. Yes, God bless what, you, uh, Eric, Thank you for... Uh, and we, uh, I will be praying for, for Eric's, the repose of Eric's soul. And uh, May, if I could give you a big hug in person, oh. I certainly will. So there's a virtual hug for you. Big old virtual hug right there. So, That's um, very nice. Beautiful. Oh. I'm sure she's in tears right now. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm not too far off. I'll tell you that after hearing that. That's something. <laughs> um, the most challenging scene. I think, I think the most challenging scene for me came when I started to, um, to preach to the crowd in episode uh, six um, for, for the, uh, the healing of the paralytic, when the paralytic gets lowered through wow. the roof of oh. Zebedee's house. Yeah. So uh, it starts off, it's just a bunch of us, myself, the disciples, Zebedee and his wife, Salome. And uh, we're having a conversation and then their neighbors come in and then a couple of more neighbors then come to the window and then a few more gather outside the door as things are progressing. Uh, I think it took five days to shoot. Um, and there were all these different elements that we were focusing on. And when the crowd started to get really um, big outside of the house, Jesus, I stand up at one point to be able to, to address them all because there's so many of them and to make sure they can hear me. And I start preaching the parables. Uh, um, the woman who goes to the judge and asks for justice, the, um, the, the Pharisee and the, uh, the, the tax collector who are preaching in the synagogue. And I think the tax collector can't lift his eyes to God and the, uh, the, um, the, uh, the Pharisee who, who says, Oh, Thank you, God, that I'm so holy that I'm not like this tax collector. If, if I have their, their jobs right, I may, I may be off on that. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but he basically thanks God that he's not like that guy over there. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and such powerful parables. But um, we were filming them where it was a little bit on me, but mostly about watching all of the, the faces of all these other people and seeing all these things that were happening at once. Cause there was, a, it was the biggest scene we've shot in the show so far. Mm. And all these, there was like 20 different main actors that were all on set in that scene at one point. And so as we started, as I started to preach the parables, you know, um, and the city and a hill, uh, uh, so, you do. You don't light a a, 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 a a you don't light a candle and put it under a bushel bushel basket. You put it on a stand for a lampstand for everybody to see. A bunch of these parables. As I started preaching the parables, I became very aware of myself, mm. and what I was saying, the words I was saying to these people, and who it was that spoke these words. And we were kind of moving through these scenes pretty quickly because it wasn't so much about me preaching. It was about everybody else, right? But we would finish one setup and go to the next one. And I just felt unsettled. And this is the beginning of the day. I, I just felt very disturbed. Mm. And, I, and I said to Dallas, I said, Dallas, can, can, you, can we just slow down for a second? And he said, Why, what's, what's wrong? He had no idea what I was going through. But I was, it's just a, it's just a storm inside. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm having a hard time right now getting through all of this. And we're just moving from scene to scene. It's like, mm -hmm. why, why are you having a hard time? And it dawned on me. And I said, because I don't feel worthy to be saying these words. Mm -hmm. 
I don't feel worthy to be standing here watching these people staring mm -hmm. at me as if I'm Jesus mm -hmm. preaching to them. Mm -hmm. Me, Jonathan. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I belong here. Mm -hmm. And then he just stopped and he, he understood what I was saying. And he put his hand on my shoulder and he said, brother, none of us are worthy. Uh -huh. None of us are worthy. But you and I are here making this show, telling this story so that others may know about him. Or something to that effect. And immediately I just felt this burden, just like wow. my load was lightened. And I, and I recognized it's like, wow, okay. Yeah, this is, this is not, I can't let ever let this be about me. It's never about me, but you know, I'm human. Right. I'm sinfully human. I'm a very, very flawed human being. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I don't hide that because I can't, there's no, there's no way to, uh, all I can do playing this role mm -hmm. is to, to pray that I'm able to empty out enough of myself so that the Holy spirit can work through me and be a channel and that people watching experience an encounter with Christ they may not have had before mm -hmm. or experience an introduction to Christ if they've never met him or if they don't know who he is. And, and that's it. That's all I can do. I, I can just say the words. I pray. I go to mass before I start filming. I mm -hmm. try to go to confession. I find the church whenever I get to, to, to wherever we're filming. Nice. And when I settle in, I make sure I go to mass. I take, I, try to go to confession i try i take the you know i receive the eucharist mm -hmm. and i try to get powered up powered up to go then deliver that spirit as god allows it to flow through me to 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 elevate the words and make you know my voice his voice mm -hmm. or or vice versa you know make have his voice work through my voice and so that there's almost nothing recognizable of me yes and that it's him you know, wow. that makes sense. Yes, I, 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 I got reminded of our guests a month ago. It was Chris Stefanik. And then he said so prof something profound. It is through Jesus. You, know, you, you say, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Okay. I'm not worthy. And then if you, in the next few minutes, you are receiving him inside you you know it's so mm. beautiful i mean none of none of us are worthy mm. and dallas is right all of us are right and you know don't let satan you know defeat him because he was playing around in your mind jonathan oh like, yeah yeah but, but it was so he beautiful certainly was. He said that right. you know you were not worthy and a few few minutes later god is with us you know it's just yeah. so beautiful yeah yeah you know um why are you in tears <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yo, yo, no, no, who would not be in tears? <laughs> but, but that's, I think that's the answer. The, the, uh, uh, why you're playing the role so well, the humanity of Jesus, because the authenticity shines in you. Um, Thank you. Amazing. That was, that was, that's beautiful. You know, um, I, I got to crack this joke. I really have to. I know it's oh, okay. It <laughs> from my, this is from my son, Skyler, who's probably managing this, this show. And um, I don't know if this is original or not, but uh, he says a couple of months ago, he says, Dad, now I know um, that Jesus is Catholic. <laughs> because Jim Caviezel is Catholic and John Rumi is Catholic. He's Catholic. <laughs> That's just a joke. I'm sorry. I couldn't let that pass. No, no. Well, I mean, it, it, if you look up on Wikipedia, <laughs> The founder of the Catholic Church is Jesus. They list him as the founder of the church, mm -hmm. which he was mm -hmm. for 1,500 years. And then, so part of the thing I try to do whenever I pray with people, and I, so many of my brothers and sisters out there are, are non-Catholics, um, it's so important. We're so fractured as, as a body of Christ. It's so important to remember that we worship the same son of God. Mm -hmm. It's the same savior. And we, we have more in common 
than we do, uh, than, than, than we'd have differences. So I think it's important to remember that. And when we're dialoguing and praying with each other to, to really embrace and celebrate that fact that there's so much more that unites us. And if we just talk to each other about the things that we don't understand about each other without judging from some lofty ledge, you know, with, you know, ready to just fire an arrow whenever we can be like, you don't believe this, you're dead to me. You know, like I find Mm -hmm. that that is such a prevalent um, attitude uh, this sort of cavalier, like I have all the answers. Mm-hmm. Like, no, you don't have all the answers. Mm-hmm. You know, nobody has all the answers. God has all the answers. Mm-hmm. And if we're, again, if we're engaging in that virtue of humility, that's our job is mm-hmm. to be humble and know that we don't know everything. And people have different beliefs. And if you don't agree with them, or you think that they're wrong, or you 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 know you feel that they're misguided, well, then pray for them pray for them. Don't, yes. you know, don't, let's not tell them to their face, like you're wrong. And here's why don't go trying to win the argument. Cause you'll never, you'll never change anybody. You'll never want them to even want what you have or what you know, or want to be a part of the faith. If, if people, if we're always going at each other with these big clubs or the mm-hmm. pointing these fingers and, That's you know, th- thinking that, uh, you know, that we're more righteous than other people. Uh, We have to remember that we can be bold, but we have to be humble and we have to lead our conversations with each other, uh, with our brothers and sisters with love, you know, and uh, eventually that's what wins out. That's what wins out. Mm -hmm. When I started praying during the quarantine, I started praying the Divine Mercy Chaplet because it was just something that God put on my heart to do. And I'm like, really? Online? Yeah. But uh, like on Facebook? Yeah. Do it live. Do it live? Really? But then people will really know I'm Catholic. Yes, they will. Uh, but but it's okay. Okay, fine. All right. I started doing that. And then I started doing the rosary. I'm like, what am I doing? I'm like, you know, if I was ever worried about people not hiring me because mm-hmm. I was too outwardly, you know, Christian and then Catholic, it's like, well, that's, that's, the, that's the proverbial nail in the coffin. But for me, it was, mm-hmm. you know, it was liberation because I just, yes. it doesn't, again, it's not, there, mankind does not rule my destiny. So I just said, this is what's been put it, being put on my heart. So this is what I'm doing. And in the process, God has opened up all these channels and these graces for me to meet other people like Dr. Scott Hahn, mm-hmm. like Bishop Barron, like all these other p- influential people that have taught me so much about my own faith that I didn't know. And there's so mm-hmm. much that I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, the other thing that happened was that all these you know, non-Catholic brothers and sisters, because I feel I just want offered an opportunity for people to pray with me. Just let's just pray to Jesus. And yes, we're going to pray the chaplet on rosary beads. And uh-huh. many of you don't know what that is, but let me tell you, this mm-hmm. is kind of what it is. And this is why it's, it's kind of okay because it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. And if you just take a minute to explain and demystify yes. and, and, you know, demythologize, Mm-hmm. what it what our prayer life is people will then be open and then start seeing the riches richness of that of of our history and of mm-hmm. their own faith the origins of their faith and next thing you know i'm getting messages mm-hmm. saying hey i'm a long, lifelong southern baptist but i just got my first set of rosary beads Woo! you know and like <laughs> um i got a message from this guy who who for years would get these anxiety attacks he was i think uh, also a southern baptist or pentecostal maybe and he said he started he openly started praying the chaplet and he he said his anxiety attacks stopped mm-hmm. wow. and and how does that happen well the spirit works through mm-hmm. through people and th- th- when 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 we g- lead with love and openness and communion community and dialogue well then the spirit is is now able to work in people's lives people are open to receiving the spirit you know and uh and i just found it's like you know to 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 borrow a a, a crude uh, agrarian uh expression you, you get more flies with honey so um, <laughs> I, I don't know why you'd want to get a bunch of flies right, right, with honey, right. but uh, but that's the the expression. Um, yeah. 
yeah, I, th I think it's just, it's, I wanted to mention that because I think it's, it's so important now when, when we see the enemy trying to use us uh, mm -hmm. as tools against each other, mm -hmm. that's, that's when we got to step back and be like, whoa, what's, what's going on here? Okay. So I got Catholics against Catholics because of X, Y, and Z. Like, right. really? Like, right. is that what we need to be doing right now? Like we're, we're not the enemy. He's mm -hmm. the enemy. That's the right. enemy out there uh -huh. doing this to us. So let's be self-aware. Let's, yeah. let's really recognize what's going on and, and throw aside the, the political uh, differences within the church. And let's mm -hmm. just focus on Christ and, and, you know, be stronger as a culture because that's how we're going to defeat yeah. the enemy. That's how we're going to defeat evil. Yeah. I, I I love you calling that out. Um, uh, uh, that's what Christ has always wanted, mm -hmm. a united church. Mm -hmm. But here's another thing that you could add to your story, Jonathan. Mm -hmm. we, we have always been missionaries. We we, yeah. we like working on the sidelines, you know, mm -hmm. getting our hands dirty and it kind of keeps us grounded. Yeah. But, but your show has made us step out of our comfort zone, myself especially. Mm -hmm. I. I don't like being in front of the camera. I, I, I like being in an exam room with my patient, <laughs> talking about things, everything in confidence, you know? Yes, and, that's true. But he, here you are, and I'm thinking, you know, here's this guy, he's famous. He's got everything to lose doing this, mm -hmm. and he's praying the rosary. Yes. And he's getting a following. Well, not so much about the fun, but it's about, <laughs> it's about how, how does he do that? And um, here we are talking to you and letting you know that you you have changed the way our ministry is, yes. is going you've added an arm to our missions and, and our mission work thank you That's yeah wonderful. and you know when do we is it okay we still have a few minutes with you sure you know? sure sure yeah yeah. Okay? yeah 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 for sure minutes. um when we I changed that drink. rosary to nine o'clock, so that's okay. Okay, oh, all right. Oh, <laughs> and listen, I, and I'm going to tell you what that was. And and again, uh -huh. thank you. And I apologize for that because that probably freaked a lot of people out. Here's what happened. And God okay. is now sort of prompting me to, to tell this to everybody. Uh-huh. Sorry. It's okay. I got a call from a friend um, or a message from a friend his wife's best friend is planning on going through with terminating a pregnancy tomorrow because the, um, the baby has down syndrome apparently. So when he told me this, the first thing I could think to do was to just jump online with as many people as I could get. And I started call on every prayer warrior that I knew and send in messages like we gotta we gotta try to change this we gotta try to change this from prevent this from happening through our prayers through our prayers so everything else in my mind just went out the door and all of a sudden that became mission central how do I fix this how do I help this in some way what can I do I can't do anything except gather people to call down the spirit mm -hmm. to work through this poor woman's uh, heart and her mind uh, against all the forces that are surrounding this woman saying that this is what she needs to do. And she unfortunately is um, feels that that's the decision she has to make. So um, tonight at uh, nine o'clock Pacific in uh, about a little less than two hours, I'm going to be on Instagram live um, praying a rosary which I haven't done in a while, uh, in honor of this woman. Oh. Um, her name is Samantha. Samantha. So I'd like to ask uh, all of your viewers out there to pray for Samantha, for Samantha's heart and her mind, for strength and the courage, um, for God to, to, to open her heart to changing it and seeing that she has the opportunity to save this life that it is a life worth saving no matter what the doctors are telling her no matter what circumstances no matter what science is telling her to do or what they're recommending or the the troubles that it's going to bring her that she may tune all those voices of the enemy out of her mind and that she may invite the source and summit of life through christ mm -hmm. and the holy spirit and god the father to work through her to to change her mind 
and to allow this baby to be born. Mm -hmm. Even if it means she has to give it to up for adoption or for whatever it is, God forbid, uh, though anything is better than the alternative, than, than to not go through with it or to feel that she has no support or no help. So, so um, yeah, I would just ask for, and I don't even know this woman, but mm -hmm. I just mm -hmm. feel, com I feel strongly compelled that, that we can, we can change the outcome of the situation through the intercession of the Blessed Mother and our prayers. And the more people we get praying, the better. Absolutely, so. absolutely. Wow. So, so uh, viewers, 9 p.m. is 12, uh, 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time is 12 noon your time. So in a few hours. Yeah, please join uh, uh, us with Jonathan Rumi. And Instagram. Uh, what's, what's, your, what's your Instagram account? My Instagram handle is uh, at Jonathan Rumi Official. Jonathan official. Rumi Official. Yeah, it's the only one. There's a, but you'll know it's me because there's about almost 58,000 followers. If there's like 200, it's a fake account. They keep mm -hmm. popping up from time to time, but it's Jonathan Rumi Official. There's about 58,000 followers. Uh, that that's how you know until they verify my account. That's how you know. That's how you'll know it's the right one. So, actually, I think they know it already because they were the ones who alerted us that there is a rosary happening at the same time when we would interview oh. you today. So they said, "Oh, some of them yeah. messaged us yeah. and they said, are, are we still on with Jonathan yeah. Rumi out in Power oh, Philippines?'" Oh, praise God. Yes. I, oh, but, no, but, no, 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 this is providential. This is providential. Yeah. Yeah. Can I just say this? Mm. This is so providential, two things. You had just shared with the, the second most Christian nation in the Asia, next in to the, East Timor, yeah. the Philippines. I believe it's East yeah. Timor. The Philippines is, one, is the Asian gateway to Christianity. And mm. if Filipinos would pray for this woman, Samantha, and for that little unborn baby, I am sure we could storm the heavens through prayers because Amen. it's just providential to me. And also Mother Teresa, who is always defended the unborn. Right. And can I just say this? I was just about to say this because this thing here, it says get used to, to different, different you know? <laughs> yeah. We had this shirt yeah. before it during oh, that's uh, awesome. Yes. We, we wore it during our interview with Dallas and he was like, Oh, you guys are wearing it. I'm not even wearing mine. And so, <laughs> you know, but, but this get used to different, which is my um, face mask. Yeah. You know, I know you're not asking, uh, uh, but um, you have it too. <laughs> I have, I have. No, I got a different one with a cross. Uh, it's somewhere. It's somewhere. I have a uh, one with the fishes with the with the, the oh, chosen. Yeah. Just says the chosen on. Yeah. Okay. Not yeah. With here. But sorry. <laughs> well, yeah, but I just thought that I would let you know that the beginnings of Empower Philippines is because we also have a special needs child. It's not Down syndrome, mm. though, but it's the same. We, uh, he yeah. attack has autism. He is four, he's 16. He is mm. the reason why we do what we do, really. God bless. Um, we could, we're already in the States. We don't have to do what we're doing. We don't have to. This yeah. being in front of you and to speak in English because that's not our language. It's not our first language. All of this is hard work, but it's effort. Mm. But it's a relationship with Jesus because you can't have a relationship and you don't work hard for it. You will lose it. You know, any relationship, you have to have effort. And uh, for God, just like you, when we said, you know what, Lord, allow, just just be in this, you know, take, take, take the lead. You drive our, 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 either this pilgrimage, not me, but mm -hmm. you. And that's what God did. You know, he, 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 he transformed Zach. His name is Zach. And he's the reason okay. why we're doing this. Mm -hmm. This speaking of humility, speaking of the chosen, we see Zach through Matthew. When you chose mm -hmm. him, no, when Jesus chose him, even that's though right. he was different. Yeah. And so when you shared Samantha's story, I mm. thought that that was also me because mm. I asked the Lord why. Mm. I don't want anyone different. The world will measure my son because he is different. But guess mm. what? You have taught us get used to different. <laughs> and yeah. so, so, yeah. and so, and so for those folks who are undergoing some, some kind of experience like Samantha is undergoing, maybe thinking about 
uh, uh, aborting a, a child because they're different. I will tell you right now, the biggest blessing in our lives, sh short of our marriage and, and, our, and, and our family, is Zach because he has taught us how to be sanctified, how to suffer and then be transformed. And how he's gotten us closer to God and how he has put meaning into our lives mm. that would not have otherwise been possible had we had another child. There's Praise so God. much value in that life. Yeah. Praise God. Right. Yeah. It's and beautiful. so if, before we end, mm. did you receive the Yeshua? No. No? It's uh, Bishop's. Uh, we we sent it to the address that we yeah. Leslie gave. Well, maybe he hasn't done it. It's yet. yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. You want to talk about? Oh, no, no, you go. Yeah, this is the book. It's is if the chosen is a movie that talks a TV series that talk about uh, Jesus up close and personal. This is our best, uh, our beloved Bishop Pablo David, who wrote oh. a behind the scenes book. Uh, oh, I think it was addressed to your. What was that? Your work address? Maybe it's still there. Yeah. Yeah. If it was, uh, if it was to my manager, he yes. may still have it. Oh, yeah. okay. Because yeah. yeah, because I'll, I'll, I'll let him know that there might be something there. Then, because of COVID, everything is wacky, and so yeah. it's been nobody's been at their offices, and stuff is massively delayed. So I apologize. It no, looks no. like a beautiful book, though. Yeah, the uh, yeah, go. Go ahead. Bishop uh, Pablo David is a is a figure in the Philippines, and he's a Bible scholar, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. he's written and he holds you in very high esteem, really. Oh, in our, in our first bless. pilot episode, he actually spoke about you and, and the work mm -hmm. that the chosen does, and um, um, he wrote a book, Yeshua, which talks about the humanity of Jesus, it mm -hmm. takes it from a different angle, and he wrote the uh, and he wrote a dedication for you, and uh, yeah. we said, oh. Yeah. That would be oh, nice. wonderful. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait to see it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, I will I will let my manager okay. know to uh to make sure he checks his his uh, office mail. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Jonathan, how can uh, uh uh people support you and your mission? What would your message be for the audience? Um You know, um do. yeah, I I I think um definitely you know um supporting the chosen i also have um i have a um i'm the uh vice president of a a, a non-profit entertainment company that's just getting off the ground called gk chesterton entertainment mm -hmm. um we've got um every for the last several years i've been doing a passion play um mm -hmm. and uh that's now led to the formulation of a, a company with a my co-director and the director the founder of the company um a gal by the name of maria vargo um so there's uh i can also send you a, a link but uh if you go for for more information we're just putting up a website in the next couple of months um if people want uh to get a copy of the dvd of the, the passion that we've done uh well i don't know if you guys can play american dvds over there in the philippines we, but we, you can we, definitely... we can and if there is a uh um what do you call it now media that we could download or they could download yeah yeah so if you go to the last days uh the last days passionplay.com you can sign up and and then we'll we'll we send people information on um how to get the dvd how to get how to download the uh the video um, the last days passion play .com. The last um, .com. yeah and then uh, speaking of uh, Matthew um, there's an app that I'm um, I partnered with uh, the uh, the largest um, Catholic meditation and prayer app called hallow um, so if people are familiar with calm and headspace this is like that but for Catholics and Christians and it's not um, just Catholic stuff, but there's all sorts of prayers, but it's, it's largely, there's a large contingent of Catholic prayers and, mm -hmm. uh, liturgy of the hours and, uh, Lectio Divina that mm -hmm. you can do. And there's music and, uh, and I did, I narrated, um, uh, uh, se several chapters from the gospel of Matthew that you can fall asleep to, uh, and listen to mm -hmm. the, uh, the Beatitudes, the Sermon on the Mount, uh, which we're actually focusing on for season two of the chosen. So it kind of worked out very coincidentally. It just worked out really well. Um, uh, there was we have the app. city there. We have, yeah. the app. we have the app. He sleeps uh, ahead of me. <laughs> that's not bad, oh, okay. right? <laughs> Is that bad? Yeah. 
I think that's no. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you fall asleep, it's perfect. So if you go, it's all, it's, um, if you go to howl.com slash Jonathan, uh, you can download uh, that there. And there's a 30 day free trial mm. that you can listen to my material, the, the stuff that I've narrated and I've got more stuff coming down the line. So um, yeah, howl.com slash Jonathan. And uh, there's also a link in my bio on Instagram as well as a link, I think, on uh, Facebook. So there's a few links there. Yeah. And Empowers, it's very calming. It, it just really, it's a great way to end your day. Um, just listening to it with you in bed, uh, turning on the app. I mean, it has, it has been- There's a calming effect. Very peaceful, very, a very peaceful oh, yeah. way to retire. I used to toss and turn. Um, mm. I, I really think that that's made me yeah. uh, uh, calm down, really, truly. Yes. Right. Oh. Yes. And if and you, you want to, yeah, go ahead. So go ahead. No, Those go ahead. are good. <laughs> oh, no, I was just going to say, like, if also people, you know, like if you're on the go and you're busy and and you're like, oh man, it's so late and I didn't do my prayers and I could have done them earlier, but like you can schedule prayer time. You know, you can have through the app. It makes it so much easier to be able to have devoted, dedicated time to praying. You know, and praying the kinds of prayers that you want to pray. So. Um, there's so much there this this the, to explore so I, I uh, and and the way it's done a lot of the meditations are done so that you know there's breathing involved and it's like you know it's it's like medita traditional meditation but with you know with the focus on on Christ and and God and and uh, which is how it should be you know yeah I recommend that we recommend that hallow h a l l o w yeah yeah. yeah. So, so to our listeners, we're going to wrap this up. And I apologize uh, to Eric uh, Barukilio and Anusha Jabanasan. I know you have questions. And Ness, I know you had questions. You have a fan club listening in and they had questions. Mm. And I, we just Hi, wanna, guys. <laughs> we just want to be respectful of your time. I, um, sorry, it, um, uh, but I hope you found this very meaningful, uh, especially oh, the, need, the need for praying for uh, Samantha and the people who are going through difficult Th uh, circumstances like she is um yeah we would like to pray for you is that okay we, can we pray okay for you close. oh please i'll i'll take as much prayer as i can get <laughs> yeah for jude praise um i would like to send this to you also this is a rosary made in the philippines by one of our empower philippines volunteers but she makes them in while she prays in the real presence in the blessed sacrament so oh, this wow. is very uh, this is special. So we will I I'll it. send it to the it's same. It's a third class relic too. It's a third class relic. Yes. Oh. So, is, yeah. So is there a way for me to see it? I, I can't see you guys oh, at the moment. It's, Here. Uh, it has it has the colors of the Philippines. No, I, I mean uh, red. I, I think I just see myself at the moment. I don't know how to switch. Oh, back okay. Uh, oh, there we go. Oh, 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 look at that. There you go. Oh, oh there. beautiful. There it is. Right. It's a red, it's, yellow, it's the colors, the colors of, of the Philippines. Oh, that's and great. And it's a third class relic because we take it to, we, we took, took it, it to, to the tomb of Jesus um, wow. in the Holy Land. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, where, where he rolls. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. So hopefully we get to mail it to the address and you can. Yes. It. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll have my uh, publicist shoot you an address that will probably get to me faster. So. Okay. All right. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Jonathan. Sure. Okay. And, and for the people who are listening in after this, we'll let Jonathan go and then just stay, in for, uh, stay with us for some announcements. Yes. In the name of the Father, Father and the Son, and the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to learn and draw inspiration and purpose from the life story of Jonathan Rumi. We also draw comfort in that you truly are with us in a divine and and human way, that you chose to live with us, suffer and die for us as part of salvation history, not because you had to, but because you wanted to. You wanted to show that you are the embodiment of, of love. Help us to live out our purpose, um, just as Jonathan is doing. We pray for him and his mission, that he may continue to glorify you in his work and in his life, Keep him in good health always. Uh, bless and we pray and that you bless his personal intentions as well. 
And we ask this through the intercession of our Blessed Mother, and in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father. In the, the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. God so bless you. God. God bless all of you. Thank you for what you do and for your ministry. And may God always keep you guided and protected and, and covered in, in all of your endeavors and, and your um, your missionary work. You're a blessing to, to, to all who are watching. So thank you. That means a lot to us. Thank you very much, John. Well, you're going to be very busy. We know. <laughs> busy in mind one day. Hopefully, we can host you in the Philippines. God willing. I would, I would love to. I uh, I had just seen um, the uh, recently. I got a, a sneak preview of the documentary on Father Patrick Payton. There's a movie called Pray, uh -huh. and uh, the rosary uh, rallies that he did in the Philippines were incredible. Yeah. And and yeah. in fact, they the Filipinos uh, are credit him with the change in regime, from what I understand from this documentary. <laughs> Which is amazing. So I think it would be such a wonderful opportunity to, to get to be there as well, uh, and and yeah. you know follow in his hallowed footsteps. So. Oh, the bishops yeah. would love to welcome you. Yeah. And uh, that would be amazing. LA. Yes, yes, we can. Yeah. Make you. you will change the landscape of uh, you. You reinvigorate the Catholic faith mm -hmm. in the Philippines. Yes, yes, very much. Wow. All right. God willing. Thank you, Jennifer. We will join you. Thank in, you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless. God bless you. God bless. Thank you. See you soon. Bye bye. All right, folks. Um, wow, that was that was really truly really powerful um, and very authentic. We have a lot to learn from from Jonathan. Yes. Yes. Again, um, I I say this a lot as from the lens of a Filipino woman. I appreciate the vul vulnerability, the being vulnerable, meaning allowing yourself to just be open to who you are and sharing who you are, mm -hmm. because this is the purpose of life, to mm -hmm. define it by what God wants you to be, not what the world wants you to be. And mm -hmm. for him to say the lowest bit and share with us his lowest, the, the, the crises in his life, the, the many crises in his life, that's to me, you're right, authentic, mm -hmm. because you don't get that in at least of what we know of America, of Hollywood, you know, of power. Yeah. And, you know, he puts the, the masculinity and the coolness back in Catholicism. I mean, why is it? I, I ask myself this question. OK, why is it not cool, scary, um, mm -hmm. anxiety provoking to come out and, and talk about the Catholic faith mm -hmm. and, and, and to profess? that you belong to the one true Catholic and apostolic church. Why is it scary? Uh, here's a guy who, cares, who stands to lose everything by doing so. And we know true. that. Yes. And he puts himself out there and prays for people who the, he doesn't even know. Just, That's right. Like um, Samantha. Uh, calling, yeah. calling folks to just pray yeah. the rosary. I mean, I mean, you know, we look up to saints as as role models uh, they're, they're like our idols and to me someone like jonathan who professes humility um it, it's it just creates a great feeling you mm -hmm. know we could we we have someone to to follow yes and i hope that just like what Jews and I feel, you know, even though we are here and you are there, we're all together. Magkakasama po tayo. Hindi po kami iba sa inyo. It just happened that God placed us here, and more, more and more realized why God placed us here. It's because we become conduits to inviting people from where we live in America and then have them come to us, come to you. Um, maybe not physically yet, but at least spiritually, because in real, in, in essence, it is where Jesus abides in, mm -hmm. in within our hearts. And uh, I thought that that is the, the mission that we have for each other in, in this time of COVID when we are not sure, we have these people who are sure of mm -hmm. their faith. You know, when you're not certain, there are these people who are certain, who are with, without a doubt will say and declare, you know, that I'm a Christian, I believe in God, I'm, I'm a Catholic and I pray the rosary and I don't, I'm not, mm -hmm. I, I don't apologize for it. And if you don't understand it, I will explain to you. Right. So this is all encompassing the mission and vision of Empower 
Philippines of what it is to be a Christian, of what it is to be Catholic. So I hope uh, before we say goodbye, Paul, uh, I would like to ask you also as we pray for Samantha, please, as we join Jonathan in his Instagram rosary at 9 p.m. In one and a half hours. In one and a half hours in the Philippines uh, noontime. I also would like for you also please to uh, join me uh, in Kapampangan po ako, Tagapampanga. And uh, since January to, Ju to se September, we have lost eight priests. I, I hope I got the number right. Mm -hmm. We have lost eight priests through death. And, and I know that in the Archdiocese of San Fernando, where I come from in the Philippines, in Pampanga, we are mourning, we are grieving because and dami pong paring namatay. We have got eight priests. And you know, for a priest to, to, to educate a priest until he is finished and be ordained in the holy orders takes about average of seven years maybe or mm -hmm. eight years i'm sorry about the number but I, i'm just uh speculating that's the, the, the number of years it takes for someone to be a priest so just recently we lost someone who's only two year old two years old as a priest and then recently uh, an older one but anyway sana po isama niyo po ang mga pare mga please uh, help us in praying for the souls of the priests, also for those uh, across the world, of course, who have lost their lives either through COVID, either through any tragedy. We are with it. We are in this together. If our destination is heaven, we cannot be saints just by ourselves. We need each other. And that's why we keep doing this coffee conversations for however long God wants us to do it. So again, I hope I got, uh, for me, I got inspired by Jonathan Rumi's profession of faith, uh, the declaration of his faith and um, unapologetically Catholic. And I get inspired by the feast, uh, whose feast we celebrate today, St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta, who loved the poor. And I thought I will share that also with you where you live, be there. Be like Saint uh, Mother Teresa. Uh, find your Calcutta. Ako po, we find our Pampanga. We find our uh, Bacood Santa Mesa. We find Philippines wherever we go. So I hope that that is uh, also what you uh, get inspired from, uh, um, basing on what's happened today. Look at our calendar. Uh, we have Dr. Edward Suri next yes. um, uh, next week. Um, go visit our web uh, our web page. You could also look us up on on Facebook. Empower Philippines. Follow us, uh, and please, please pray for us. We need your prayers as well. God bless you, everyone. Um, good good evening, and um, yes, good and evening. God bless. Maraming salamat po. God bless y'all.